We're back to this side. Thank you. My name is Stuart Jenner. I have a first question for Linda from the FAA, and then I have a follow-up question as well. First question is, there's a website called transdance.bts.gov, which has flight delays data on it, as well as on, and it's broken out by constituent components. I looked today at the eight months ended July of 2009 compared to the eight months ended July of 2008. So we have one time period when the third runway was fully operational, but um, the first runway was not fully operational during that entire time. And then we have one runway when the one, one time period when the, um, only the first and second were operational. Transstats reports that the weather delays, as they find it, for the eight months and in July of 2008 were 0.46%. In other words, less than one half of 1%. In the time period when the third runway was operational, those delays actually increased to 0.57%. That's a 20 percent increase, but we're still about uh, uh, an infinitesimally small number. So I'm wondering, if weather delays were so low to start with, why was the third runway needed? Why have delays significantly dropped when you look at this data that are caused by weather? I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with that website. So. Um, well, it's the, if you go to the bureau, if you go to the Department of Transportation, it's the main website. Um, it's the main number um, that they list for um, flight delays, and they have tons of statistics all over the place. Um, but this is. If you read, uh, like Scott McCartney's paper, um, stories in the Wall Street Journal, or lots of other press, flight stats uses this data. Lots of it's the widely reported number whenever you talk about flight delays or age, um, age is loss, and those types of statistics, statistics, they're using trans stats from ETFs. And you look at these numbers, and it's impossible to see that there ever was a problem with what you like. So I'm wondering what your perspective is on this. How much benefit is there actually getting from the third runway? Okay, my, my perspective on this particular question, because you're using statistics from July. No, I was using for eight months ended July 2008. So I was using December of 2007 through July of 2008, and then comparing it to December of 2008 through July of 2009, which is the latest period that the data is available for. Okay, so I, I misunderstood. Apologize for that. I don't have an answer. I'm not going to make one up. I don't have an answer. Thank you. I appreciate you not making one up. Um, yeah, but I have a little bit of point earlier, and I consider myself in that category too. I moved here in October of 1998. Before I moved, before I even started house shopping, I went to the noise office and asked a lot of pointed questions, and I actually did not get the answers that you're giving now. Um, so that's the first comment. Second comment, I'm the guy who has gone around with the RCA noise monitor. It is a NIST certified noise monitor. We sent it to um, manufacturer of Renewal Care. We sent it to Atlanta to be calibrated, and they have the calibrator calibrated as well. A um, couple of observations about this process. The first is, if you look at a 65 number, it's not particularly threatening. And that's the way your data comes across when you look at it on your website. But when you look at a number like this, um, or a graph like this, See, lots of spikes at about 100 during the wee hours of the morning as well as during the day, you get a really different perspective. Now, I think you're right, Stan, that the contours have shrunk because this particular residence was one block inside the 65 dB contour, DNL contour. It, the average during the daytime shows as 62.2 for 7 a.m. until 10 p.m. And so this house with multiple instances above 100 dB would not even qualify for the 65 DNL contour. Therefore, it would not be eligible for any money that comes from the FAA. So I have a couple of questions here. First of all, in the Seattle Times a few days ago, there's a story, there's a story, emergency order for the library New industry studies in July found that in Tacoma, a little longshore train bridge, test trains produced 83 decibels. That is a fraction of what a lot of people are getting done on, and yet they would not even be eligible for FAA money. So, what's stopping the court from putting up its own money to help these people? A second comment. You 
your website is English only, your instructions for how to use a phone system are not user friendly. There's a gap. We got through the Freedom of Information Act. We got all the data of who had filed voice complaints, and there are some significant areas where no one has filed a complaint. I asked some neighbors nearby, "How come no one from these blocks has filed a complaint?" They said, "The people there are Spanish-speaking. They do not use English phone tree systems that ask people to register before they can even give a comment. They don't use the internet, especially the English internet website." And so I think that you have a very limited perspective of the data and of the real problems. Another problem with 65 and Tina Nomar, um, the person mentioned the lights flashing. Um, I was the person who told that story. Um, literally, these people cannot put up pictures on the walls. They have shakes so much. I, I could imagine someone who had epilepsy having a seizure from the lights flashing through their house echoing off the mirrors and things like that. And yet, that house also, right now, is barely at 65. That house is at 128 and 12. And so, I think your 65 mark is totally screwy. I think you're using it as a fig leaf to high time because you want to only use what someone else is going to pay for. What's your rebuttal? Right, is the court actually willing to put up its own money not our money from property taxes, the way that you did with the schools, but actually our own money, your own money. Okay, we want to see that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have an airport development plan group. The airport development, development fund, we have the passenger facility charges, we have FAA grant funding, and we have the tax loan. Passenger facility charges, the airport development fund, and the AIP grant funding are all federally regulated. We can't just go in and why do that. And then why does it say here, though, that the um, right rail sound transit is able to go out and get money and put their own money for this? Because the FAA federally regulates airports. We like rail is regulated. Their like rail is under very strict jurisdiction. Not under the Department of Transportation administrations. It's not FAA. It's Department of Transportation. The OT is looking over their books and scrutinizing them very closely. As are their bond holders. We operate under federal grants. We receive federal grants from the FAA and other groups to continue with those grant assurances. We have to assure the FAA that we will do certain things. One of those things is not spend our money in other areas that don't have a, a direct association with the airport. So you're not allowed to use POCs or ADF unless, unless it's approved by the FAA. One of the purposes of the meeting tonight, um, as I spoke with Tina earlier, was to um, get feedback for what needs to happen. And this is clearly an area where there is a lot of room for movement. 65 DNL, there is a world of difference between a person who's got 50% of the time 66 and 50% of the time 64, as compared to a person who's got maybe I mean, minor of the time 90 But again, as a federally funded airport, we have to go by the FAA standards for noise mitigation and a national standard. Or you are trying to change the standards the way that you die. I'm serious. Don't laugh at me. These, no, these guys right here, these, these are our legislators. These are the guys that have to go to Washington to actually make that change. We, as an airport, can't you're, ask you're, you're not being aggressive enough. You're saying, we, you should, what you should be saying is you recognize there's a problem, and we will work with the legislature to yes. something different to happen. I have been <laughs> That's what they're there for, and I, I pledge to you guys, I will do what I can. I'll be there, you call me, I'll sit down with you, I'll give you every bit of information I have in order to do what you feel is best for this community. Will you make your data available so that we can see how many instances there are above 90 dB, how many different instances there are between 80 and 90? Because when you look at your website data, it masks the extremities. There's time above averages on the web. It masks the extremities of making it easy to understand what's going on at various times of the day.